Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. I thought I'd do a little holiday vlog today. It is about a week out before Christmas. I don't know about you, but it being a week out from Christmas, I have so much to get done today. So I thought I would just do a vlog video, do some Christmas decorating. I have a virtual appointment with a plastic surgeon today, not to get plastic surgery, certainly not virtually anyway. Um, but just to have a consult about my neck, you guys know I've been talking about and thinking about getting all therapy done on my neck for what, four years now since before COVID started and just have never gotten around to doing it. And also to see if she is a good person who would do my Botox in the future because of course I've had to let it all wear off to test the gadget that I'm testing right now. So anyway, it's just a consult to kind of, you know, meet a new doctor since I moved here. I don't have anyone here to do my Botox or, you know, to do that kind of stuff. It is 12.20 now. I have to eat lunch before I have my meeting with her at 1.30. I have to give the dogs their lunch. I have to take them for a walk. And then I thought I would just be doing some decorating. I have to make a batch of Swedish meatballs for the Christmas Eve party get together that I'm having here at my house with my family. So I feel as usual around this time overwhelmed. I still have all my wrapping to do, which doesn't take me long because I use those gift bags. So I love those, but you know, I always feel overwhelmed this time of year. Um, so much to do, got to color my hair, get my nails done. Obviously not all today, but how are you guys doing? How are you feeling with the stress of the holidays? You feeling okay about it? Are you getting everything done? Let me know where you're at. Today's Monday. By the time I put this up, it'll be Friday. So hopefully you will be all set by Friday. I'm hoping to have everything under control by Friday. The kids are coming home Thursday, but just wanted to say happy holidays and thank you so much for being here another year. I hope you have a great uh, holiday weekend this weekend. You kids ready for lunch? Let's see, a little one for the little dog and a bigger one for the big dog. You sit. Good girl, there's your carrot. Yum, yum, yum. You sit, good boy, there's your carrot. Mm. Oh, she's on a diet, so that's all she gets for lunch is a handful of carrots. Nom, nom, nom. You finished yours? You want another? Okay, sit. Good boy. There you go. Such a pretty sparkly day out. Must be the calm before the storm. There's supposed to be a giant wind rainstorm hitting us on Thursday into Friday with power outages. So I gotta get everything done by end of day Thursday. Pressure's on. All right, you guys, I've got, I don't know, 12 minutes until I have to be on the phone with the doctor. So I've got my lunch here and today my salad has um, avocados. It's got, what are those? Brussels sprouts from dinner the other night. It's got some beets in it. I got some of those pre-cooked beets. It's got walnuts, sunflower seeds, and pumpkin seeds, and a nice little like spring mix of lettuce. I don't want to talk and have my mouth full, so. Hmm, how's this gonna work out? Maybe we'll do a mukbang. You guys watch much mukbang? Sorry, I feel so rude. I assume that they talk Mm, the salad is so good. And of course I have my piece of toast with hummus smeared on top. You can see my Christmas tree back there. I have that end of the room mainly decorated. You can see all my staging here on my dining room table. So I have a bunch of things to do there and my kitchen counter is a mess. <laughs> so I need to get the kitchen counter cleaned off. I need to get all that stuff up and where it goes and do all the decorating. Before I get on this call with the doctor, you guys, um, where you are, if you want to make an appointment with like a dermatologist or a plastic surgeon or something, do you have to pay just to make the initial appointment? Like, I think this is some weird Connecticut thing. When I was in Massachusetts, I could go see my derm. I could go see a plastic surgeon, you know, for injectables or consult. They didn't charge you anything to like walk in the door. But down here in Connecticut, I've been to, this will be my second um, like plastic surgeon trying to just get Botox. I don't think that you should have to pay to walk in the door to get Botox. The first one was $150 to just make the appointment. This one's 75. I mean, they both apply the amount to a service that you get. So, but if I wasn't sure if I wanted something, I don't know if I'd be comfortable with like paying the money, you know, like what if they're, what if I'm not going to use them? What if I like decide that this isn't the office for me and I'm, then I'm out 75 bucks. Anyway, um, eight minutes left before I have to log on. Let me go ahead and eat this so I don't have to rudely chew in front of you. <laughs> and 
um, then I'll see you after the appointment for doing a little of that decorating stuff. All right, consultation is done. It was 15 minutes. I really like doing it online. It was great to talk to the you know actual plastic surgeon who would be uh, doing the work, even though it's not like surgery. What I'm thinking about having done is Morpheus 8 on my neck, which is radio frequency plus microneedling. So it's supposed to be the best thing. She was recommending two to three treatments. Um, she said you might see something with the first, but you know, maybe not as much as you're hoping for, you know, by the second, if you really love the results, you could stop there, but generally they recommend two to three. So I have to get the pricing from, from the uh, assistant and we'll see how it goes. So hopefully I will be getting that done in January. Can't wait to be doing a video on that for you guys because I mean, my neck's not terrible, but it's not uh, really matching up to the face either. So I just went outside to start um, decorating the front stoop and there were some packages. Got a couple from Amazon and an Ulta box here. This one should be mainly vitamin C serums. I don't know if you guys watched my video last Friday. Um, I had bought a bunch of vitamin C serums and pH test them to see if they would work because they were ascorbic acid in water serums and those have to be formulated at a lower pH. There are stable vitamin C's that don't need to be at a lower pH, but the ones that are ascorbic acid in water do in order for them to get in your skin and work. And in the comments below that video, everyone was like, well, what about this one? What about that one? What about the other one? So I was like, oh no, I better test more. So I bought a bunch of them. So let's see, I've got the Murad one, and this one's called Butta. Have you seen that one before? I've never heard of that brand, but it is an ascorbic acid water one. I've got the Vichy one here. Wow, this is gonna be a lot. Um, another Pixie, which I'm not having high hopes for. This one is from Teeny Juice Beauty 20% vitamin C. This one is from Claire. So how many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven <laughs> more vitamin C serums. I have a feeling that there's more in these Amazon boxes. This is why it's heavy. Oh. Need an office paper for my printer. So that goes upstairs. And oh, we've got some vitamin C here, it looks like. This one is Brandify Skin. I mean, there are just so many new brands. This one is from Casa Rex. I'm pretty sure this one will be formulated correctly. How am I going to use all these? I'm going to have to fill up a bathtub with vitamin C and just bathe in it. Oh, oh my UV braces. I am so psyched for these. Wait, there's only one. It's not two, it's not a pair. I have two knees. <laughs> I love the Amazon Essentials fleece. So I bought a pink one, like for a pajama kind of one. I have this in black and I love it. That is the best little fleecy jacket. So. Okay, so here's another vitamin C. This is the Skin Diva one. So I'll put that in this box. That's a lot of vitamin Cs. Oh, and this little guy, look at this little cutie. I know it's not a Christmas ornament. It is a pill box, like a seven day pill box. So it's got, my friend had this when she was visiting and I was like, oh, I love that. So it's got all the days of the week here and they each unscrew from each other. So like you can do any combination that you want. So if you're just going away, say Friday, Saturday, you do those, those two. Just screw the lid on it. And then you're only taking this with you instead of like a giant pill box. Isn't that so clever? I just thought that was the cleverest thing. Okay, so my next project was to change out the batteries in these. These each need three double A's and they were all dead from last year. So these are awesome little battery powered um, lights. And I put this in a vase and it goes like over there by the front door. Uh, but um, these also have a timer, so it has off and then timer. And I think the timer's on for eight hours and off for 16, something like that. So I can't put these on and tuck them into the vase until dusk, which is in about an hour. So those are all set. But in the meantime, just thought I'd show you this area of the house, which is all done, I think, for the holidays. I think I might need something else for my coffee tables, but I have this really old, old plastic Santa in the corner over here. Isn't he the cutest? Rescued him from my parents' basement. I think he's too fragile to go outside, so 
I have him on a timer, so he's gonna stand in that corner and light up. This is my mantle decoration. I bought this last year, and I also found this cute little birdie who I thought looked just perfect in there with his little crown. And uh, this isn't very Christmassy art, but that's what I have on the TV right now. There are my stockings and the dogs. Here's the Christmas tree. Do you guys keep your tree lights on all day? I turn them on first thing in the morning when I come out and I leave them on all day. I just love it. It's missing a few ornaments. The girls will still have to put theirs on. And uh, and the other thing over here is I like to have all the pictures of the kids when they were little sitting on Santa's knee. Usually crying, right? And then I have this pretty vase with a little garland around it and silver and gold balls inside and then this little garland as well. Um, but what I noticed while I was over here is that my humidifier needs water. F doesn't mean full, it means empty. It means fill me. So I gotta fill this. I like this one because it's a nice big console. It holds five gallons of water. You just pull out these tanks and walk them over to your kitchen sink and fill them up that way. So let me fill that up. This is one of the best things for, you know, keeping your skin nice during the winter is getting like a whole house humidifier. I have this one that's five gallons and then I have a six gallon one in my bedroom and a six gallon one upstairs. So I like to keep the humidity level at around 40 because it can drop down. The indoor humidity can drop down to like below 20 during the winter when you have the heat on. So I like to keep it at around 40 for the winter to keep my skin nice. And then I also have this humidifier antibacteria stuff. So I just put in like a half a cap full of that in each of the bottles and uh, keeps the air nice and keeps the water nice and clean and from getting bacteria in it. So this is the model I have in my bedroom. It's a lot smaller than the one that I have out in the living room. But um, this one I have it on 45% humidity and it's maintaining it. All right, you guys, it's 4.15. It is time to do the stuff that has to go on a timer like the lantern. So I got these lanterns for my front porch. I know I showed you a different set a couple of months ago that I got at Target. It saves so much money, um, but they were open in the top. I thought that they were closed in the top, but it was just the packaging. They had like a piece of cardboard there. So when I tapped it, it felt like it was solid, but it rains inside them and snows inside them and it ruins my little battery powered candles. So they were no good. So I got these the other day. These were much more spendy. They're very pretty, but they're closed. So the rain and the snow won't get in there. So I like how they look with just the candle, but I like how they look better with some ornaments around the candle for a little bit of color out there, a little bit of sparkle. So I have to tip this back like this and throw in a bunch of ornaments. And of course, it's more like little ones to the back and this size one can be in the corner. And then I have to put the candle on to timer and kind of lay it in there. has a bunch of pretty colored ornaments in it. All right, so that's one. The lanterns will go out here on my little front porch. I also have a pre-lit white flocked Christmas tree. It's a little bit too lightweight, so I found some leftover tiles in the basement, made a stack of tiles, tied them together, and attached it to the base of the tree. It also gives it a little height so that it sits in this planter pot better. I like having the tree raised up a little bit so that you can see the tree and the lanterns aren't in the way of the tree. And then I have one other little lantern that doesn't match, but but it's much shorter and a cutie. So that's my whole front door display. And the best part are the two little fuzzy faces looking out and ready to greet the guests. And oh, while we're here, let me show you my coat. I just got this about a week or two ago. I have been loving it. It is so warm. It's extra puffy, but I love how the sleeves are cut kind of narrow and how it cinches in at the waist. It's got like ruching back here on the back, and I love that about it. And it's got like a little 
faux fur hood. I love how long it is. I have another really long coat like this and it doesn't zipper all the way down. And so when I walk, it like pulls to the side and it pulls my pants in a circle around my legs. And this one doesn't do that. So I can actually take my dogs for a walk in this one. And I love it. Comes in like, I don't know, four or five different colors. Of course I went with the black, but I just think it's such a flattering coat for like a big, you know, oversized extra long puffer. Timer, timer, timer. Now I can drop the battery packs in there. They go in first. And that goes there, so that greets people when they come in the door. All right, you guys, it is time to make the meatballs. So I've got my mom's recipe here on this ancient recipe card used a lot of times. I took over the meatballs about I want to say 20 years ago maybe and I've been making them my way ever since. The original recipe calls for ground sirloin, ground pork. So of course, you know, me being me, I make it with ground turkey, but I keep it a little naughty just for tradition because everybody likes the flavor. So I do have ground pork here and I do put in a little bit of ground bison and I take out some of the butter and I put in some olive oil instead. But for those of you who are eating carnivore or paleo, you will love this recipe because it is all the meat, all the butter, all the fat, all the good stuff that you love. So you need the stand mixer to mix the meats up and the handy dandy hook attachment. Arr, makes me feel like a pirate. Let's go ahead and get that on there. Okay, I also need to be sauteing some onion. So I'm just gonna do that over here. I need the onion chopping ahead of time so I have it in a zipper bag. I'm not doing the full recipe today. I don't have the full recipe on my blog or anything, so just so you know, I don't know if this will be up anywhere for you to find it, but it is really delicious. So I should get it up there one of these days. Um, so here's the ground turkey, gonna throw that in. Uh, the recipe only calls for two pounds of meat. I end up putting in three. I make a separate batch for my brother who has autoimmune issues. And so he's on the Hashimoto's diet. So here's our pound of ground bison. I like bison better than regular old cow. They raise them without antibiotics or hormones. So that's a good substitute for beef. And then we have some all natural ground pork. Wash hands. Just mix those meats together. Now I've got my onion sauteing over here. They look Pretty nice, I'm just gonna let them cool. I don't like to put hot onions in with the meat. Whoops, just realized I'm doubling the batch so I need twice as many onions. So. All right, so I've got my handy dandy onion chopper out here, but what I noticed last time I chopped onions, if you just put your onion in and try to go like this, it's super hard to get it down. And also it's too big of a chop because this recipe really wants just a finely chopped onion. So I'm just gonna cut through a little bit. Even though I have to pre-chop it, it's still so much quicker and easier than having to like chop the entire onion finely all in my, with a knife. Okay, so that is some um, pretty finely chopped onion. So that works out better when I'm doing a smaller dice. So with Hashimoto's, you can't have dairy, you can't have like pepper, can't have um, bread, so the normal meatballs will have milk, eggs, and breadcrumbs and pepper, and my brother can't have those, so for the beginning of the batch, I'm only doing the meat, the onions, and the salt, and then I'll split off his portion of meatballs, and then I'll do the regular one and a half pounds of meat with the rest of the regular recipe, and then I make his gravy sauce separately as well. For the main meatballs, it's kind of like a milky sauce. It's like a white creamy sauce and can't have the cream in his. So for his, last year, I kind of just tried to invent something good and he really liked them. So I used butternut squash as the base for the sauce. So I roasted it with um, you know garlic and salt and then put it in the food processor and then used chicken broth and made the sauce out of that and it was really good. So I need to go to the store tomorrow because I still need the butternut squash. I only have a tiny, tiny one back there on my windowsill that the family meatballs want milk and I don't have any, I only have oat milk. So um, I feel like the meatballs are doomed for tonight. Basically I was gonna mix the meats together and then you refrigerate it for an hour or overnight. I was gonna bake the meatballs tomorrow. 
Those onions are nice and soft. Don't they look yummy? So I'm gonna put those in. And I think I'm gonna leave a few in the pan for my dinner tonight. I'm gonna have a rice and tofu bowl with cauliflower and mushrooms. I'm gonna use those to saute up the mushrooms over there. So I'm gonna keep that for later and let me go ahead and mix this all together. Go, oh, Mr. Stan Mixer, just to mix up. I think I'm just gonna do this tonight, put saran wrap over the bowl, stick it in the fridge, go out tomorrow, get some milk, get the squash, get the rest of the stuff I need to make these things. And uh, that'll be it. So anyway, sorry, kind of a fail on the Swedish meatballs for today, but it is getting kind of late. Uh, I gotta take the dogs out. I also have like three batches of cookies to make, and I have more hors d'oeuvres to make for the cocktail party Saturday night. So I have a lot to do. So uh, I'm just trying to get this done early. So that's it. All right, well, I think that that's gonna be it for today's video then, everybody. So thanks for hanging out with me. I really enjoyed spending the day with you. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog video and I hope you have a Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. So thanks everybody for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button and the notification bell and all that. So I will see you in the next video. So take care everybody, see you later.